Hey guys, Jay Young here with Young Red Angus. Thank you so much for making this video a part of your day. I've already filmed this entire video once, but as I went back in, the birds you can hear, I realized that was just too loud. So I went back in the house, grabbed my Sig Sauer, I think that's gonna take care of the problem. So, anyway, other than my ears ringing right now, I think we're gonna do great with the sound quality. The wind is not as, as, as troublesome as it was earlier. Today's video is about the first bioreactor that we made in the 2023 season. So, we're gonna take you through the process of what it is like to fill it, um, what products we choose, why we choose them, and then kind of monitoring the temperature, watering and uh, making sure you get the pipes out. So let's roll the intro and we're gonna get into it. And this is what we all feel. Let's just not deny it. Something pulls and it tears in the deepest place. This is what we all know. Why must we still fight it? It's time to open our eyes and acknowledge the writing on the wall. Today's episode is sponsored by SoilWorks. Go to SoilWorksLLC.com and check out their awesome products like GSR Calcium and Bio5. That's SoilWorksLLC.com. So the first thing that you guys need to do is you need to pick your materials. Pick materials that you have access to. Um, one thing that we make sure that we do is we try to get 50% carbon when we're picking our materials. 50 to 60 that is. So we are, are shooting for that 50 to 60 mark because that's the best consistency that we're seeing with the finished product when we're, when we're using materials that are 50% carbon. So the materials that we picked for this particular bioreactor were 50% cornstalk leaves, 25% manure, 12.5% grass clippings, and 12.5% of wood chips. So try to source materials that are close to you. Uh, Dr. Johnson has gotten by great with just uh, leaves. So if you have access to leaves, there's a lot of biology within the leaves. You can get by using just leaves if you have access to them. So that's what I recommend um, for filling the bioreactor as far as pick leaves if you got them. If you don't have them, you know, use a lot of the stuff that you have on your particular farm, garden, wherever you're at. Use those material. Try to get 50 to 60% of a higher carbon source. Something like grass clippings would be like a green source, or if you use prairie hay or oat hay, that's gonna be a green source and try to keep that in the manure um, on the 40 you know, percentile of your mix. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is filling our bioreactor. Now there's two ways that you can fill your bioreactor. The traditional Dr. Johnson method way um, that is taking it through the bath process. Um, I'll link to his video uh, in the comments uh, of this video. So he takes it through a bath process. We're taking it through a bath process. I recommend that if you don't have as much time, if you have access to a mixer or feed truck, you can get by doing this. But I have talked to many people about using uh, a mixer or a feed truck to fill the bioreactor. And it seems like it's 50-50 as far as whether or not they go anaerobic or they don't go anaerobic. So if you wanna be on the safe side, use this bath process that we're getting ready to talk about. Um, I've done it and made them non-anaerobic doing the feed truck method, but I know that I have the kids. Um, I like teaching the kids hard work um, and I have the ability to do it. So I use the kids and this is the bath process method that we use. So if you're going to do it my way, then you need a couple of things. You need big buckets. Uh, we use lick tubs, but there are these buckets right here. You need at least two of them. Okay. So one of them, you're going to put a screen in the bottom of it. I left this line going through the center there of the lick tub. And so I use that and then I put a mesh screen in the bottom of that. That is so that your materials can get caught in the in the lick tub and allow the sand particles to fall fall down. So then you'll you'll need one like that and then you'll need an intact lick tub or bucket. The next thing that you need is something to measure your materials. So we use in this filling this particular bioreactor this five gallon bucket and and empty coffee cans. Okay. You'll also want access to water to be able to fill your lick tubs up. And this is gonna get full of, you know, sand particles and manure that 
is going to break down and fall through um, your uh, your buckets. If you're not using something like manure, if you're just using uh, leaves, you'll have to drain out the bottom of it less often than what we do. But you know, every 30 minutes or so, they take the sledge or sludge, whatever, and it's in the bottom, and they dump that out. So here's the process: you take your material and you fill it into this bucket. So one bucket of the the corn stalks and then a coffee can two coffee cans of the horse manure and then a coffee can of the grass clippings and a coffee can of the wood once you have your once you have those materials in the lick tub you mix it around and then dunk it in the other lick tub so the other lick tub you're going to fill halfway full of water and you're going to dunk that up and down mix it around with your hand um, until the, the, the materials are nice and mixed around. From there, we dump the material on top of old IBC tote lids that we've drilled holes in so that they can kind of dry out. If you take it straight from the bath and put it in the bioreactor, it's going to be too wet. So we like to let that dry out and drain a little bit. Um, the process is they dump that on top of those uh, old IBC tote lids and then they start a new batch of mixing it up and then they'll take what they had dumped earlier on the IBC tote lids, dump it in the back into the bioreactor, and then they'll dump what they what they just got done making, and then they just do that whole cycle of making a batch, dumping it on the lid, letting that sit, making another batch, taking what's on the lid, dumping it in the bioreactor, and then just going through that whole cycle. If that was kind of confusing, I feel like I do a better job of explaining it in this video right here about filling your bioreactor. Um, if you want to look into more, you can check out that video on filling the bioreactor. So when I say we, uh, it was primarily my two boys, Caleb and Truett, and then two high schoolers that help us, uh, Eli Shear and Landon Jenkins. So shout out to them who did the most of the work. I helped for about an hour and then they did the other four hours. So it took the four of them four hours to fill this particular bioreactor. If you want more information on how to build a bioreactor, check out this video on how we design three different types of bioreactors uh, for more information on how to build them. Okay, now that your bioreactor is full, uh, the next step is pulling the pipes. So the following day, you're going to pull the PVC pipes out of your bioreactors, um, and then you're gonna want to start uh, checking your temperatures. So the following day, our temperatures got up to 125. Um, you want to test your temperatures, um, and the reason for that is, is once it gets up to that hot point and comes back down, you wanna go ahead and add your worms. We've been doing earthworms, but this year we're gonna get worms. We're going to get compost worms, uh, red wigglers, and we're gonna add them. So we'll have both the earthworms and the compost, uh, red, composting red wiggler worms in our bioreactors. So make sure you're monitoring your temperatures so you have an idea of how hot it gets um, and you can kind of watch that and know for future references. Take great notes. Write down what was in your mix, when you made it, what temperatures it hits, and how long it stays there. Make sure you're measuring your temperatures. Uh, you want a composting thermometer that's 18 inches to, to three feet uh, long for that process. Uh, the next thing that you're going to want to do is start watering. Um, we got this bioreactor too wet. You can see right here in these photos that there's w too much water on the bottom. So I didn't quite put a gallon in it on those first few days. Once there was no more water coming out the bottom, we started putting a gallon in every single day. So water is going to vary based on your area. You don't want water coming out the bottom because that means you're watering it too much and it's going to go anaerobic. The cool thing about these composting piles is they're, they're supposed to never go anaerobic. So make sure you pay attention to how much water uh, you're putting in. Dr. Johnson recommends a gallon. He's lived in um, New Mexico and in California. So if you're in the north part of the United States, uh, you might not want to be putting on a full gallon. Um, we back off of a gallon um, once it's gone through the heating process. A gallon ends up being too much and there's water coming out the bottom. So we water a gallon until we see more water coming out the bottom and then we back off. All right, guys, so I'm going to take you inside the shed and I'm going to show you what the uh, bioreactor looks like right now. And we'll talk a little bit more about the temperatures uh, that we got to. Okay, so here we go. 
Okay, as you guys can see, the bioreactors broke down quite a bit. Um, I'm, we're a week out and I'm almost ready to be able to take off that top layer. And that's why I do the stack method because it's um, a way to get easy access to your compost. Here's the composting thermometer that we're using. Um, this is 18 inches long, so you guys can see it, it pretty much gets to the center of it, uh, of the bioreactor. Um, you know, if you wanna get a three foot long one, you're, you, that's, that's fine. Whatever you wanna do just to measure the temperature that you're hitting on your bioreactor. So um, we got this one too wet, as I mentioned earlier, uh, backed off the water. Um, uh, we made this the past Saturday. Uh, it got to 125 on Sunday. Wednesday, it was up to 141. Uh, today, it's down around 100. So anyway, once it, gets, once it gets down to where it's at 80 degrees, I'll add our worms and we should be good to go. This compost, I'm pretty excited about. It should break down fairly evenly. Uh, the compost over here uh, turned out pretty well. I'm going to take you over there right now. This compost, I'm pretty confident, is going to turn out fairly well. The compost we have over here was 60% corn stalks, 20% grass clippings, 10% horse manure, and 10% wood chips. So very similar consistency. It, this one just has, you know, a little bit more manure uh, than the one had last year. Um, and there was a little bit less corn stalks uh, in this one. And this was straight leaves, and that has uh, the actual ground up stalks in it but I'm pretty confident that it's gonna end up the way this one did um, and have a great consistency. So that's why we do what we do, while we measure everything, while we write down our dates so that we can try to kind of match our consistency. I recommend the same thing for you. Write down what materials are going into it, write down what your temperatures were and document as much as possible. So if you screw it up, you kind of have an idea of what you need to do differently for the future. Um, right now, there's some gnats flying around this one. Gnats are a bad thing. It means it's going anaerobic. I'm not worried about gnats on this particular one because we used 20% horse manure, or it was half horse manure, half cow manure. But anyway, that horse manure has gnats around it consistently. And so since you're putting a high bacteria uh, element in these, at the very beginning, I'm not worried about the gnats showing up. Um, if Three months from now, I have gnats. That's really bad. Okay, so make sure you watch that. Uh, make sure the gnats go away. If, if you're using manure, if you are using leaves, you should never see gnats. Okay, if you're using just straight corn stalks, you probably shouldn't see gnats. If you see a little bit in the beginning, don't panic. Um, just give it time and see what it does over time. So that's what I have for you for this video. Uh, in the comments, make sure you let me know what you would like to see in for future videos. I can't promise I'm gonna get to every single comment, but if there's things that I think are interesting and are gonna work out for what we're doing, I'd love to add that to the, the list of YouTube videos that we're putting together. So thank you so much for guys for watching this video. Keep pursuing soil health and Jay Young out. And this is what we